Thanks for watching. Today we're going to look at a completely new segment of RC, which is RC low riding. Now, um, people have been doing this for like niche markets for years and years. But seeing a vehicle like this available for the masses is truly something new. Radcat has introduced in collaboration with Jevries, which is Jeroen de Vries, a Dutch guy. They have introduced the uh, Radcat 64, which is a Chevrolet Impala from, you guessed it, <laughs> 1964. Um, let's start with some of the disappointing stuff first, which is this uh, sleeve. Now, this is a sleeve that you find around the box. Uh, it does depict what is inside, which is uh, the Chevrolet Impala from 1964. It also shows you what it can do. However, it is a rendering, and I don't think that it really does the car any justice. So, if there's any point of criticism, this would actually be it. Uh, because apart from that, I really don't find a whole lot of stuff to nag about. By now you have already seen the car hop a bit, you have seen me unbox it. Uh, because there is such an amount of detail going on that, uh, uh, you know, it's almost impossible to keep this video short and sweet. But if you look on the inside of this sleeve, you will see that there's a graffiti up wall. Which means that if you want to completely uh, get into uh, things even further, you can uh, uh, unwrap this uh, sleeve. And use it as like a backdrop in case you're not driving your uh, Chevrolet Impala, your RC Lowrider, and you just want to have it on display. Perfect piece for that. Uh, apart from that, on the outside, I was not that keen on it. What I am really keen about is this uh, box. Just check this out. It has chrome, it has all the pinstriping. I think it really sort of like encompasses what this whole RC Lowrider lifestyle, or really the Lowrider scene, what it is about. It's about uh, customization. Uh, chrome, bling, uh, things that really look cool, bold colors, and uh, yeah. So they managed to do that really well with this box. This box also comes with a ton of uh, foam inserts. I have already taken everything out of the box just so I can uh, talk about it, of course, and uh, have a really close look at it. So this is a piece that you really want to uh, hold on to, not just because it is a pretty box, but also because it is a pretty practical box. Why is it practical? Well, that is because this uh, car, if I need to guess it, I think it weighs uh, seven, eight pounds, depending if the battery's in there or not. And to take the body off, you actually need to turn it upside down. Seeing that it has such an amount of detail, because this is really as close to die cast as it gets, with it still being to able to be used as an RC, uh, there's of course a ton of stuff that can get uh, damaged. Now in the packaging, this uh, uh, piece over here is foam bit. This actually sits on top. So this slides over the roof. It also has cutouts for the mirrors and it has uh, some cutouts for the scale antennas that I have not installed yet. So you can actually put this over the top of your rat cat, but in return you can also flip it upside down, lay it like this, flip your car upside down in it in case you want to pull the body clips uh, if you need to access the chassis, work on it or uh, whatever. So this is a really clever piece almost to just take with you as well if you go driving this somewhere. Uh, because you also need to be inside the chassis to change out the battery and, and all that stuff. Um, well, let's go over some of the more boring stuff first, I guess, which is uh, this nickel metal hydrate pack. I'm not a fan of nickel metal hydrate, but in this case it makes total sense. Why do you want to have nickel metal hydrate? That's because this also acts as like a counterweight. You need to balance this car, that's really what it is about. It's about three wheeling, it's about hopping. Uh, it's about a ton of stuff that usually you would not do with an RC, but uh, this of course being a low rider. You do want to do all those things. And in that case, this nickel metal hydrate pack really makes sense. So, so 3,800 milliamps, which gives you a ton of time to play with it. Because I would just call it play time, not run time. The last thing you're going to do with this thing is actually run it. And also to drive it, that's really not the intended use. So it's not a fantastic driving car. It actually feels terribly clumsy. Uh, it's very heavy in the back, so it doesn't really steer all that great. It doesn't really throttle all that great. It's not fast. If you intend on taking this to your track, you're insane. But if you just intend to take this out to like some local spot and hop your car and bounce it with your friends and show off that you actually have the coolest RC on the block, that is actually what it is for. So in that case, you uh, you ride on the money with this one. So nickel metal hydrate pack comes with this uh, USB charger. So you plug this in somehow. 
uh, and charge your uh, nickel metal hydro pack with it. I thankfully have a good charger that I can just use to charge this nickel metal hydro pack. And it has this uh, adapter to go from a Tamiya plug or Tamiya, however you want to call it, to a Radcat plug. So in that case, if you do have a ton of these nickel metal hydro packs laying around, you can actually just plug this in and have even more fun than you're already having with just this battery. Uh, you will also find these metal plates. Now these metal plates, this is again that uh, whole counterweight concept. These sit in the back. If I pick the car up, uh, there's no body clips in it currently. So I'll just take the body off real quick. You will see that uh, in the back here, we won't look at the car too long at this point. Uh, there's like a gas tank and inside that gas tank faux gas tanks sit to these uh, metal plates. Now depending on how much weight you have in front you can add some or you can take some out uh, and so you get some extra supplied width in case you do fully accessorize this out uh, put some speakers in there or go completely bananas in uh, putting like a full interior in it uh, making it really heavy maybe even a scale engine you will need some uh, extra counterweight apart from just having that uh, nickel metal hydrate pack sitting there. So uh, for that purpose these metal plates also come supplied with good thinking right. You get some stickers to uh, trick out the interior panel as you can tell it is like a 2D interior panel but it does have some room uh, for a few improvements I think so you can almost turn this into a 3D interior at least in the front so for that reason you also get uh, some of these uh, stickers to further sort of like trick it out make it look better so there's some room for improvement and that's also what we will be getting into in the next couple of weeks you also get some uh, additional stickers here for uh, the outside so in case you want to trick out the outside of the body uh, you get all of that stuff included over here also some, uh, some pinstripes I think that uh, if you can do it in paint, do it in paint. So I also have a clear body for this one. Uh, but all that stuff we will look at a bit later. Uh, you get a manual. I have not looked at this manual yet, but it is like glossy pages, really high print quality. It almost feels like a book. And it explains a lot about uh, endpoint adjustments, also about the uh, uh, functionality of this uh, six channel radio. This is a rebranded Flysky radio, six channels. This really feels like a quality piece, I have to say. And um, well, it comes with all these um, switches and all these like uh, potentiometer switches, whatever you want to call them. And then uh, it is a stick radio. So, uh, in that, it uh, holds no surprises, I think, unless you've never seen one because you've just been running uh, pistol grip radios all these years. But uh, throttle on one side, steering on the other side. I've been playing with this thing for two hours straight, and I dare say that steering and throttle are the functions that I have used least. Uh, and then here on the top is really where uh, all of the action happens. So um, this switch over here, this is the only one that is not functional. This one raises the front. So it raises the front uh, as a whole. Uh, those two wheels, they act simultaneously. And with this uh, switch over here, you can gradually lift it or gradually lower it. And when you have it lifted, uh, whether that's halfway or fully uh, dropping it, uh, can be done by using this uh, switch in the center. So if you use this switch over here, doing this will deck it out completely. And when it is completely lowered, uh, tripping this switch over here will actually make it hop. Now, how well it will hop or how high it will hop, that is determined by uh, how much the rear is raised. So the rear you can raise uh, one wheel at a time or uh, both wheels simultaneously if you push these switches all the way up or if you were to trip this switch on the side. Now here again, if you have these halfway up, you press this uh, center button it uh, drops it down completely. So in theory, if you would have these three up completely, you press these two, you deck the entire car out. And if you were to trip this switch over here, you raise the back completely and then tripping this switch in the front will make it bounce and will also completely lock it at some point where you stand on just uh, the rear wheels and the rear bumper, having it at full tilt. Uh, crowd going wild, me going wild, and then dropping it again. So that's what uh, this radio is about in brief. Uh, it says beep beep, and then it says that it's uh, for an RC lowrider. 
I think, well, even if, like me, you have a couple of dozen of RCs, you won't be able to mistake this radio for anything else. Really cool. Again, feels like a high quality. It looks great, so you will see every fingerprint on it, just because there's a lot of shiny stuff going on on this radio. It only takes four AA batteries. I was uh, quite surprised about that. Those batteries don't come included. Now, if we put all of this stuff to the side, I hope this gives you some info about how this thing actually works. And now uh, we can look at the chassis a tiny bit more. If we uh, are to turn it around, you can tell that uh, there's aluminum links, uh, rod ends, really nothing super uh, surprising over there, except for the way that it is laid out. So there's a solid rear axle, and then that axle, if I just pull the servos out a tiny bit, you can tell that uh, there are shocks attached uh, to that axle, so there is some suspension going on. I'm not sure if these are uh, uh, oil-filled shocks or if they're just uh, air-filled, but uh, in making it uh, return from full bounce in a more realistic way, it is nice that there is actually a shock absorber uh, installed over there. So again, the back you can raise one side at a time or uh, both sides simultaneously or completely jack it up uh, in one go using that uh, switch on the side. And then at the front, everything moves uh, in one go. So there's no uh, independent control on these front wheels. But uh, then again, for the more basic moves, you really don't need that either. Um, I'll just take this interior panel off real quick. This is a stall with a piece of uh, Velcro. You can tell that there's still um, some protective film installed over that uh, interior panel. There's a brushed motor installed, which is a small size motor. Again, this is not m intended to uh, go around a track really fast or to be ran really long or uh, quick in any way. Uh, you will see that uh, there's this uh, Hexfly uh, ESC, this uh, is a familiar looking unit. If you have, for example, a Gen 7 or Gen 8 Rat Cat, you will know this uh, ESC. Uh, also the plug that is uh, installed on it. Uh, the battery tray again sits uh, in the back with some uh, Velcro, so do make sure that you secure that uh, nickel metal hydrate pack before you go and try to, to hop or to bounce this uh, vehicle. There's two 25 kilo servos in the back. These are not quick servos, but they also need to travel quite a long way to actually drop that uh, rear axle. So that also, of course, takes away some of the speed, seeing that they need to travel so far. Uh, these are more uh, geared towards uh, torque and towards holding power because most of the action uh, happens once you have these uh, these servos sort of like extended so once you have that uh, rear axle dropped that's really when uh, all of the action in the front starts to happen but there's such an amount of weight going on in the back you have two servos you have the battery you have that uh, counterweight the motor sits here uh, the receiver sits here that uh, ESC also sits here, that it's really the majority of the weight bias sits over that rear axle. So seeing two 25 kilo servos installed over there is a good thing. They don't need to be quick because all of the acrobatics, they happen in the front. In the front, there is a Reefs RC servo uh, installed, which again, I think is not surprising if you consider that also the, the Gen 8 had an axe uh, version with a hobby wing axe system installed and also a reef servo from the top of my head. So uh, seeing that they hook up again with, uh, with reefs for this uh, project, I think is a really cool thing. Um, this servo does not have a lot of travel. So if you drop these wheels completely, you could tell that uh, there's not a lot of travel going on from this uh, servo between it being a fully extended one end, fully extended the, uh, to the other end. But it does need to be a high quality unit. So this has uh, metal gears. It moves really insanely quick. And on 7.2 volts, it's not going to burn out anytime soon. The steering servo is nothing special at all. But again, you know, that's really not uh, something that you're going to use all that much, apart from perhaps correcting it when you're uh, hopping and uh, bouncing. You can uh, tell that this is sort of like uh, almost a tub chassis. So all of the inner fenders are also included on this uh, very platform, uh, taking away any of the uh, uh, look inside of the chassis once you are uh, driving it or once you're hopping it, uh, which is of course really important and really cool because it adds a lot to the, to the realism and to the realistic feel of this uh, RC Lowrider. In the bottom you can tell that there's a scale exhaust installed, fully chromed, 
really giving it that uh, custom look and I've seen people already going completely bananas uh, by adding a ton of chrome on these uh, uh, upper and lower A-arms in the front and also on that uh, rear axle. Now you can tell that uh, once you drop the suspension completely it has quite a bit of toe in in front. There is an update uh, coming uh, so by next summer I believe Radcat will have uh, updated this uh, uh, steering rack uh, aligning it more with uh, the pivot points of that uh, lower A-arm and uh, by doing so eliminating uh, a lot if not all of that uh, toe-in that you currently see on a full drop. Uh, this is also a part if you have a 3D printer you will be able to print a new steering rack and uh, perhaps even a new steering uh, alignment point at uh, uh, your steering hub um, just to eliminate all of that uh, toe-in. So seeing those 3D printable files uh, available of course is uh, cool. You can also uh, buy a completely ready uh, injection molded part by this summer I believe for five dollars. This just got announced uh, really on the day that I'm shooting this video. So I think that that's cool you know they've been uh, really keeping an ear to the ground seeing what people uh, give us feedback in this uh, RC lowrider of, of course also seeing that it's this new you will run into a few uh, things that uh, people want to see different people want to solve and seeing that they act upon it immediately I think is uh, great. Um, I think that covers most of the stuff uh, on the inside. These wheels, these are scale uh, 14 inch wire wheels with uh, white wall tires, really narrow tires. I think it looks fantastic. I've seen people already coming out with uh, 13 inch wire wheels. I think also uh, Jeroen de Vries, so Jeffries is offering some of those. So if you want to, uh, to have a closer look at some of those available options go check out uh, a link to uh, Jeff Reese's website in the video description box just to see what kind of parts he has available currently. Um, now I think the last part and also for me the most interesting part to look at is this fantastic looking body again a ton of chrome so for example those wipers the mirrors the door handles but also in the back you can tell that the entire bootlet uh, trim uh, but also those uh, taillight clusters, everything is chrome. The rear bumper looks fantastic, the front bumper looks fantastic. Uh, quite a few people have found their front bumper to be broken during transport. But if you do find your front bumper broken, do not hesitate to contact Radcat because they will hook you up with uh, a new one so you can complete your car again. This is uh, something that I think uh, occurs when a product is this fresh, this new, and also this fragile because this is really close to die cast. Now how can you make a body looking this fantastic? Because most bodies you see have uh, quite flat sides and it has everything to do with uh, an undercut. So this is also a Lexan body. Usually when you uh, thermoform this, I used to uh, fabricate bodies back in the day or manufacture bodies. When you have an undercut it's impossible to pull it out of the mold. And also when you uh, have that undercut, the lexin becomes ex extremely uh, thin and uh, by being so thin, it becomes very brittle and uh, not able to withstand any abuse. How do you solve that? Because there's quite a bit of undercuts going on with the side of this body being quite curvy. Uh, you actually solve that by cutting this body up in several, several different pieces. So uh, this hood, roof and uh, bootlet section is actually separate from those uh, sides. So this uh, side uh, over here uh, connects over right under by those uh, side windows and then uh, alongside uh, the hood. Um, and the same goes of course for, uh, for the other side. And by doing that you end up with a body that looks extremely detailed. And you also end up with a body that is extremely fun I can imagine to uh, paint up because usually I would have to sit inside the body like this really like looking into it and currently with this being uh, split in three different pieces I will be able to put the body um, flat on its side like this also the front and uh, the back those are a separate section so this is actually a five piece body but three main uh, pieces on that uh, Lexan. So with that I think it offers a ton of opportunity for me to go completely to town in uh, custom painting it and uh, coming up with a really cool 
um, correct for the for the scene type of a paint scheme so that's really what I'm gonna work on as well in uh, the coming weeks I also have a clear interior that I'm going to uh, tinker around with a tiny bit see what I can come up with to perhaps create a tiny bit more depth in uh, the front and make it look a bit more uh, realistic especially if I go for a lighter interior tone now I hope this gives you a good idea of what this uh, Red Cat 64 is about again I can't emphasize enough what a great job they have done in offering something that is original and something that is new um, really cool to see that they took uh, a lot of stuff that uh, Jeroen has developed over the years and managed to put that into a production chassis available for the masses I think it is great to see uh, cars like this become available also uh, in the future of course we will be able to see some uh, some different body shells different body styles people going completely crazy in the customizing these with different wheels different tires different interiors light kits you name it I think this is great uh, because if anything you know uh, the RC hobby just needs to keep growing needs to keep attracting uh, new people and I think a car like this really does that because this is a collector's item for people who come from the full-sized uh, lowrider world and I just want to have some fun with uh, with RC if you have any questions because I can imagine that I didn't cover everything in this uh, video uh, let me know in the comment section and we'll try to get back to you if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button if you are not subscribed yet please do because it is free and it will always stay free and if you are subscribed don't forget to hit the bell thank you so much for watching take care bye bye Back on.